Hey folks, this is Jandrin here, and today we will be looking at a few of my favorite tactical tricks I picked up after a thousand hours in BG3. So, do you want to heal, bless, and grant resistance to most of your party by using one bonus action without any concentration or real resources? Do you want to start combat with your heavy hitters hasted without spending any real actions and with no concentration? Or do you maybe want basically unlimited healing without spending your actions on it? If the answer to any of these questions is a yes, Fuck yes. watch on. First tip, shooting potions. We start with my favorite trick, one that I'm amazed more people don't already use. I call it the potion trick, and it goes like this. Equip a character with the Whispering Promise Ring, and if you prefer, with any of the other on heal effects like the Hellrider's Prize Gauntlets or the Boots of Aiden Comfort. Then make sure to give them a bonus action ranged attack somehow, simple as the teeth by equipping two hand crossbows. Notice that the character doesn't need to be proficient with the hand crossbows for this to work, as their attack modifier doesn't matter at all. And there are no other adverse effects to equipping weapons you aren't proficient with. Now, once in combat, drop a healing potion on the ground and place it where you want it by dragging it around the battlefield. Once it is in a position, shoot it with your bonus action to break it. And grant all of your unheal effects to anyone nearby. Most importantly, this will bless everyone for a plus 1d4 bonus to attack and saves. And then of course it will heal them and grant them any of the other effects like Blade Ward or temporary hit points. The Bless and Blade Ward only last for 2 rounds, but it's well worth the use of a potion and a bonus action. If for some reason your bonus action is more valuable at a given turn than your main action, just shoot it with your main hand shot instead, or throw it. Of course this trick works best on a build focusing on melee weapons or cantrips, who doesn't have another strong use for their bonus action. I personally use this trick all the way through the game, and I get the ring as early as possible. All three items mentioned can be gotten very early on. The Whispering Promise Ring can be bought from Bolo in the Druid's Grove. You can click the trade icon while talking to him to open trade. Or you can get it later when you meet him again either in the Goblin Camp or in your own camp. Elrider's Pride can be stolen from Zevlor. It's easiest achieved by letting Aaron knock him out and then grabbing it while he's out cold. Or they can be gained as a reward from helping the Tieflings deal with Karka somehow. And lastly, the Boots of Aid and Comfort can be bought from Grab the Trader in the Goblin Camp. So for the second tip, shovel the support. With this tip, we need a little bit of background. In the Necromancer's cellar below the Blighted Village, you can pick up a scroll of Summon Cheeky Quasit. You can then learn the scroll on a wizard and use the spell to summon Shovel. If you speak with Shovel with any character with at least one level in Wizard or Warlock, they can get Shovel as a familiar, even if they later spec out of the class. This way, by respecking, you can give a summon to someone who does not get it from their spec, basically getting another body for free. If you need a step-by-step -step walkthrough, you can check out my Karlak build, I'll put a link in the description. This of course is not the actual tip, even if it is rather nice. The actual tip goes like this. First, get Shovel the Quasit as a familiar on one of your characters as described above. Quasits have natural invisibility, so make sure Shovel is invisible before entering combat. Then before combat, bunch your team together and drop a potion of speed on the ground, or just act first with one or more of your characters to do it in combat. Now when combat starts, use Shovel, who did not enter combat or initiative order because he was invisible, to break the speed potion, and voila. Most of your party is now hasted for 3 rounds. This works best if most of your party acts first, so the positioning doesn't become a liability. It also does require you to use a speed potion of course, so save it for more important fights. I basically never use haste because this is simply more powerful. Tip 3. No action healing. This is really two tricks in one. The first part, reactive healing, is pretty situational. Certain attacks hit the entire area around your character. Maybe they're actual area of effect attacks, or maybe they're just melee attacks of some often larger enemies. In these situations, you can drop a healing potion on the ground at your feet, and when the enemy attacks you, they will then break the healing potion as well as damaging you, healing you straight back up. This can even prevent you from being down, to be honest. Or at least, technically, it gets you right back into the action if you are down. Since some patch or another, most enemies will avoid using this sort of area of effect attack on you if you're standing on top of a potion and they have other options to avoid healing you. But this also means that you can basically force enemies to not use their stronger area of effect attacks simply by placing a potion at your feet. Either way, win-win. You can still make them break the potion and heal without using any actions. The only difference is now you need to put the potion a bit further away from you and then you need to walk into it once it's your turn. The second part is utilizing sustained area of effect spells to break your potions for you. Cloud of Daggers, for instance, deal its damage to anything entering its area of effect. So if you stand right next to it and drop some potions on the ground and then drag them into the Cloud of Daggers, they will break and affect you. Seeing as this takes no actions at all, you can practically use as many potions as you like for the cost of having an already strong AoE spell cast. 
This one admittedly feels a bit too cheesy for me, but it's there if you want it, I won't judge. That's all the tricks for this time. If you want to see any of these tricks in action, or are curious about what else you can pull off if you have spent a thousand hours playing Baldur's Gate 3, you can check out my duo No Rest No Cheese on a mode challenge run on my channel. It starts out hard by me doing Commander Shulk, the Mind Flayer, and the Campions in the tutorial. Hope to see you there. Thank you for joining. If you have been, I've been Shantran, and you've most definitely been awesome. Don't forget to do the YouTube stuff, and bye-bye.